Now, Standard Chartered says that it hopes to raise more than $5 billion through a share sale. The UK lender is seeking to boost capital reserves after regulators set out more stringent standards in Basel last month. Well, for more now on the bank strategy, I am joined by Standard Chartered's finance director, Richard Meddings. Mr Meddings, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Um, let me just begin by asking you about why you have decided to do this. Now, you already do have a pretty strong capital status uh, well above the uh, Basel III rules. So what's, what's behind this decision? Well, let me um, put it into some context. Um, uh, first of all, we've announced a one for eight rights issue to raise um, just over $5 billion. That rights issue is fully underwritten and also has the support, which we appreciate, of our uh, major shareholder, um, Temasek. Um, it's done from a position of strength that we have produced our third quarter trading update today, which is, has produced, again, record income and record profits for the nine months year to date and builds off a record of seven years of successive record income and profits growth. And growth is the key here. Um, we serve markets in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Those markets are growing at between 5 and 8 percent, China ahead of that. And we don't want to have to constrain our growth rate, to constrain our ability to help and support our customers and, and, and clients because of emerging changes to regulation. So the rights issue um, does two things. It safeguards our ability to grow with our clients at the same time as improving our capacity to meet forthcoming changes in the capital regulatory regime. Now you talk about those changes. Are you thinking that maybe the UK is going to ask for a higher uh, tier one capital ratio than has been asked for at Basel because you already meet the uh, Basel three requirements? Um, we're not making, taking a particular view um, on the UK. I think the Basel three requirement, of course, is that there's a new minimum capital ratio emerging of 7%. But um, the Basel three announcement left significant national, uh, left much to, uh, mm. to national discretion. And in particular, the two elements of capital, there's uh, a counter cyclical capital buffer and add on, and there's uh, a potential capital add on for systemic systemically important firms. Those elements of capital will be in addition to the 7%. So um, we are simply taking a view that it's important to build um, a stronger capital position on top of an already strong capital position, therefore to be able to continue to support growth in our business, serving our customers. Now you have said that this is not a war chest for acquisitions, it's about organic growth. Uh, what areas are you looking to grow in organically and, and are you ruling out any kind of acquisitions, even small bolt-ons? Um, well the group strategy um, is predominantly an organic strategy. Um, we serve uh, markets, economies in Asia, Africa, the Middle East which have strong under underlying economic growth and as importantly have growing banking markets within those growing economies. So um, are we looking to focus on any of those in particular? Not really. We see broad growth opportunities across our franchise. With regard to acquisitions, yes, we will continue um, at the very small end to make what we call capability acquisitions, but they tend to be acquisitions for $100 million or $200 million. This rights issue is absolutely not about a war chest for any major acquisition. Uh, are you thinking then that maybe the uh, Basel III levels are not quite uh, adequate? I don't think we, it's a view of, adic uh, of the adequacy of them or not. I think what we are making a judgment about is that the Basel III announcement has set a, a new minimum level. It has a transition timetable. It's quite possible that a number of different regulators may accelerate the timetable for the implementation of Basel III, so the new ratios could come in faster than the announcement, and that goes to national discretion. But also, as I said earlier, there are elements of capital now, um, systemic and counter-cyclical, yet to be determined, which are in addition to the 7%. We are simply moving ahead of that debate to make sure that we can continue to be capital strong to continue to service growth in our markets. Was part of this decision to do this now because uh, you wanted to be first thinking that other banks may follow suit? I, it's not a desire particularly to be first. I think the board, the board has thought very um, long and hard about this. Um, we believe having a robust balance sheet is absolutely critical. Our capital strength is commensurate with our liquidity strength and the fact we have minimal um, refinancing obligations over the next three to four years. So the board has a view that it's really important to serve growth markets, to give confidence to our customers that we have an unquestionable balance sheet, an unquestioned balance sheet. And that is what um, this capital raising provides. And as I said at the start, the rights issue is fully underwritten um, and it's raising uh, just over $5 billion. 
dollars, which adds about two percentage points to our forecast quarter one ratio. Now, you have been identified as a potential candidate for the top job at uh, Lloyd's when Eric Daniels retires. Are you interested? Um, it's always very nice to be talked about. I'm sure my mother will be very pleased, <laughs> but I've got a very, um, uh, you know, I'm very happy in my job here at Standard Chartered. Richard Meddings, thank you very much indeed for that.